Welcome back everybody to another episode of Easterling Customs. This is a Dell Optiplex 280. It is a 32-bit Pentium 4. Came with one gigabyte of RAM. We are repurposing it as our server. I I've upgraded the CPU to another Pentium 4. Pentium 4 I put in it is a 64 bit. I've moved it up to 4 gigabytes of RAM. I've removed the DVD ROM, the CD ROM, and the floppy disk drive because nobody uses those anymore. I've left our HDD in here. I'm going to add an SD that way speed up some boot times plus the fact that it's a 64-bit operating system because I just put a 64-bit CPU in here so let's get this upgraded a little bit and turn it into our home server shall we let's see let me get this camera set up here I'm sorry guys about the quality I promise I will I will make it up to you future videos won't be so bad Well, before we put this fan in, we need to put our power supply in place. So let's do that. This was a 250 watt power supply. I'm putting a 400 watt in it. Give us a little more overhead for graphics cards and more optical drives. Okay. Now we got this mounted. We are going to take first our CPU power. We're going to run it back around the back here. On the back of the motherboard and we're going to plug it in that way it's out of the way and it will effectively be held and invisible by the system fan that comes in here go ahead and route our 24 pin adapter here we'll go ahead and plug that into the motherboard you don't need no force. They're like if they if you have to force it in, it's not the right adapter. Now we'll take our SATA plug here, run it over here to our hard disk. There we go. Now I got a Kingston SDD here that I'm gonna put in place also. And actually, I'll make sure this is on SATA 1. Because my SD D is going to be running off of SATA 1 while my hard disk runs off of SATA 2. Got this SATA cable. This would go so much easier when my cameraman gets here. There we go. Route this down here and bring it over to our SATA port. And there we go there. Now you see we have IDE ports here, but we're, we are not using those. Those are way too old school for what we need.
Okay. Now, we're going to take our graphics card, which this is not a gaming machine. Again, this is strictly for server use only. So, we're going to slide this old school video card in here. Shimmy it in place. Snap it in place. And lock her down. Now our video card's in place. Now all we need to do is our system fan. Okay. You hear that snap? That's when you know it's in place. Now we will plug in our system fan. And we will plug in our CPU fan. Alright. So let's get our LAN cables hooked up and see if we can't power this baby up and see what happens. Take our remaining cables and we will tuck them up here out of the way. In case we ever need them later, but we won't. This is the one done deal. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Bring our LAN cable down here. apparently lost the wire tie for so I'm just gonna hang it here <clears throat> let's get us a power cable over here I'm not gonna plug that in yet because I want to make sure that I've got everything hooked up before it tries to power on Now we're just missing video. We'll take our DVI cable here, route it around back of the server rack, and we'll plug it directly into our video card. Now, now that that's all done, we'll get our power cable hooked up here and see if the 64-bit operating system will run on this 64-bit CPU because the chipset is technically a 32-bit and it does not want you to install nothing on it. Oh, look at that, look at that. I like that. Oh, I didn't get to the BIOS quick enough. I had to remove the SSD because even though it is a 64-bit CPU because I'm running the 3 gigahertz 2 megabyte cache which is a 64-bit see 64-bit CPU but the chipset of the motherboard is still a 32-bit operating system so it's not even going to recognize my 4 gigabytes of RAM it's only going to register about three and a half so what we're just doing doing a quick double check Hmm. That right there could have been why it didn't detect it. But I'm not going to go further into that right now because there's an i5 coming. And that will be the server update. So this is actually reserved for my i5 server build which I'll be doing later this week. Yup. 
everything looks great here hyper threading is off we'll turn that on I don't know why it went to that and we're going to go to performance video auto we don't want to use the onboard we want the 8 megabytes all right so let's save and exit and see what our result is will our server function now this is opinion 4 obviously came with Windows XP on it our battery is low that's fine we'll replace that later but it came with Windows XP and people are saying all over the internet you can't run Windows 10 on these they they cannot handle it you you're lucky to put Windows 7 on it well this is proof Windows 10 will run on the Pentium 4 processor and yes you can put a 64-bit CPU which will slightly speed up your system you will notice some functionality into a 32-bit system but unless you change the motherboard you're not going to put a 64-bit operating system on it as you can see we are booted up into Windows everything is running operational and that's all folks thanks for hanging out with me today and I look forward to our next video of doing the uh, i5 server update and if you guys like this video like it if you have got any comments for me leave some comments below if you've got some future builds that you'd like to see built let me know I will order the parts or get them donated one way or the other and we will do the builds let me know what you like Thanks, guys. I'll see you later.